Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the M8 multifunctional charger from Toolkitter C. The best way to describe this pocket charger is that this is the Swiss army knife of pocket chargers as it will allow you to do much more than just charge your batteries. Just as a quick rundown, this product will allow you to charge up to 8 cells like a battery at maximum current of 15 amperes or 300 watts. In addition, it can also act as a wattmeter, cell checker, server tester, power supply, and also as a receiver tester. Inside the box, you can find the M8 small charger. By the way, it is available both in black and in white. You're also getting the quick user manual and a more extensive version can be found online. And finally, you're also getting a USB to USB cable, which will allow you to easily upgrade the firmware of the charger. Now let's examine the charger. On the front of the charger, we can find a 2.2, 132x64 monochromatic LCD screen. Navigation between the menus is done using this navigation dial, and you can also press it in order to select an option, and you can go back by pressing the exit button. On the back of the charger, we can find two fans, and over here, the XC60 connector for the DC input. The allowed input voltage is between 10 to 30 volts. On the right side of the charger, we can find the output ports. So we've got over here an XC60 battery connector and a balance connector that supports between two to eight cells. Finally, on the left side, we can find a USB 5 volt 2.1 ampere port and next to it, a servo port. In terms of dimensions, this pocket charger is pretty small. I can probably fit in the palm of your hands and it weighs 138.5 grams. Now let's power up the charger. When you power it up, you're going to see the Toolkit RC website and next to it, the version that the charger is running. The front screen will enable you to choose between charger mode, measure mode, output mode, and will enable you to change the settings of the charger. Moving between the options is done by rotating the dial to the left or to the right, and you can press it in order to select an option. Let's start with the charger mode. Over here you can find five programs, so if you'd like you can save five different plans for charging your batteries. Selecting an option is done by pressing the OK button. Then over here we can set the battery that you want to charge, so you can change between LiPo, LIHV, Life, NIMH and PB batteries. Next you can set the terminal voltage per cell. Then you can select the number of cells, you can set it to auto and then it's just going to recognize the number of cells by the balance plug. But if you'd like, you can also just use the XC60 connector and then you can set the battery cells between one to eight cells. Next, you can set the charge current. It goes all the way down from 0.1 ampere and all the way up to 15 amperes. Next, you can set the discharge current and then you can select the charging options between storing, discharging, or you can charge the battery. In order to start the charging procedure or discharging or storage mode, you just have to press OK on the selected option. Right now, there is no battery connected, but after plugging a battery, you can select the option. It will prompt you if you want to charge or to cancel. Let's hit OK. And now the battery is charging. In this menu, you can see the voltage of the battery per cell. So this is actually a fully charged battery. By rotating the dial, you can see the current watt, the temperature of the charger, the amount of time that passed, and the total milliampere hour that the battery was charged with. In order to stop the charging procedure, you can just simply press the exit button. You can also add more batteries by pressing OK when it's set to new. Then you can define a new battery, you can press exit, and in this manner, you can select five different charging plans. By long pressing the OK button, it will delete the charging plan and it's actually not going to prompt you if you want to delete it. Next, we can enter the measure mode. In this submenu, you can measure the output signal from your PWM, PPM and SBUS receiver. So you have to connect your receiver to the servo port over here. Now I've got an SBUS receiver connected. And this option will enable you to check if your receiver is working properly. Next, we have the battery checker. So this will enable you to monitor the voltage of the battery and also measure its internal resistance. So let's plug in a battery. So you can choose between mode voltage or internal resistance. You will have to press test. It's going to test the internal resistance, which will take about five seconds. And now over here, you can see the result. 
You can also switch to voltage mode. And in this mode, you can see the voltage per cell and it also will enable you to balance it up. So you can press balance. It took maybe two seconds. Now the balance is complete, but still you can see that the fourth cell is not balanced as the other ones. So this is not a very accurate plan, but if your battery is way out of balance, you can give it a try. Next, you can enter the EC option. Basically, it will enable you to monitor the total watts and amperes that are being outputted through the XC60 output port. However, you can also control the throttle, but this will require you to connect the servo connector to your flight controller, and then you can just swipe the dial like that in order to control the throttle value. I'm not sure how useful this feature is, especially considering that the maximum current that can be outputted is 15 amperes. So if we leave this option aside, you can press start. Now the quadcopter was initiated and you can see that the total current that is being drawn right now is 0.3 amperes at 4.6 watts. Next under output, you can set the servo connector to output either PWM, PPM or SBUS signals. So you can just select an option, change the value and see if it's going to be reflected correctly on your flight controller or test a connected servo. The more interesting option in this submenu is the power option, which is going to transform this charger into a power supply. So you can simply select it. Then you can select between a custom option that will enable you to set the output of the voltage all the way down from one volt, all the way up to 30 volts. You can also select the output of current. Of course, if you're going to set it to 30 volts, you won't be able to set it to 15 amperes because the maximum output of watt is 300 watts and just as a reminder the watt is the multiplication of the volts and the amperes so if you're going to set it to 12 volts for example then you will be able to set the amperes all the way up to 15 amperes and all the way down to one ampere in order to start the program press start and as you can see i have a device connected over here so you can see when the output voltage is 12 volts I'm getting 12.11 volts. Let's set it to 16 volts. And you can see I'm getting around 16.17 volts. It matches up the real value over here. So you can see in this section, we can see the output voltage of 16.1 volts. Next, the current, the timer, the total output voltage, the input power from the external battery, and the internal temperature of the charger. Pressing stop will turn off the power supply. This option is useful to power up external devices. Also, you can use it as a smoke stopper for your quadcopter because you can limit the amperes and you can also use it as an on and off switch. And in addition, it will also enable you to switch between pre-programmed options. So you can choose, for example, a Mavic 2, Mavic S, Phantom S, and Inspire S options. So you can just connect the charger, use the presets, Hit start and it will power up your charger. Finally, under settings, you can set the lowest input for the connected battery. So it's going to make sure you're not going to over drain it. You can set the input power, which is useful if you power up the charger using an external power supply. You can set the set temperature, safe charging time. This charge mode can be set between internal and recycle. If it's going to be set to internal, the charger is going to use the internal capacitors in order to generate heat. This is going to be a slower procedure than the recycle option, which is going to put back the energy to a connected battery, which is plugged to the DC in port. However, you can only use this option if you have a connected battery and you can't use it if you're using a power supply. Next, you can set the SMS value. You can change the backlight settings between one and all the way up to 10. You can set the contrast. You can set the buzzer. So you can't control its volume, you can just control the sound. You can set the idle beep, so if the charger is going to be idle for this set amount of time, it's going to start an alarm. You can turn on and off the hub support, which is a not yet available option. I just checked Toolkit RC website and they plan to release a hub, which is probably going to be connected to the charger and will enable you to charge multiple batteries simultaneously. So this is going to be a pretty interesting option. Next, you can set the language between English and Chinese. 
And finally, you can reset the charger to the default options. So you need to press it, press it again, and as you can see, now the charger was reset to the default options. Now let's test the USB port. By the way, it is always on and you don't have to press anything on the charger in order to use it. So let's plug it in. It's connected to my phone. And the output current is around 1.15 amperes. I also got it to around 1.3 amperes and I've tested it with different devices and unfortunately it never got to 2.1 amperes. In order to upgrade the firmware of the charger, you will need to plug it in to your computer using the provided USB cable. Then it's going to be recognized as an external drive and for some reason it didn't work on my Mac computer and just on my PC. Then you need to head over to Toolkit RC's website, download the latest firmware. Then you need to delete the app.upg file on the Toolkit drive and then copy the app.upg file that you just downloaded. Then just unplug your charger and as you can see, now it was updated to the latest version 1.16 firmware. Currently the M8 is being sold on pre-order for less than $40, so considering all its options and its price point, I think that Toolkit RC got themselves a winner. The only downsides I can think of is that first of all, the rotating dial is sometimes not very responsive and pressing the OK can take you somewhere else. A better way to control it would have been using this type of buttons that the ISDT BG8S has and in addition the screen is not that great. You can see how it compares for example to this very good screen that the BG8S has. So let's power both chargers. And you can see how dull this screen looks next to it. This is also a color screen and this is a monochromatic screen. But in the end of the day, this screen is very easy to read and to use, so this is not a deal breaker. So overall, if you're looking for a pocket charger that pretty much does it all, I think that you should definitely consider the Toolkit RC M8. I'm going to put links down below to where it's currently being sold, and you can check it out. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you have any questions about this charger, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.